Hey, good morning. This is Mayor Valensky with Driving Markets. Driving while talking about markets. Anything said in this piece is an opinion only, and it's not financial advice and not investment advice. It's purely an opinion to give you some education, etc., etc. I hope you're enjoying the uh, actual driving markets, and the idea is to give you some good quality content, okay? Okay, so let's kick off. So yesterday, let's have, let's have a look at what was driving markets yesterday and what will be driving markets today going forward. So yesterday, the big event, as I mentioned at the beginning of the week, was the Jerome Powell speech at the Economic Club in Washington. There you gather all the economists, the financiers, the bankers, all the hoity-toities, all the people that know everything about world events, and everyone who thinks they know everything about world events but actually knows nothing, okay? So yesterday he gave a talk, and his main, talk, his main content was where inflation and interest rates are going. Um, and he's talked about the, dis he can, they, the Fed can now see the disinflationary pressures or the different disinflationary indicators building up in the marketplace. Now... Let's talk about disinflation. See, disinflation, obviously the opposite of inflation, is whereby inflation or the cost of living, the cost of goods is going down. However, the cost of goods is not going down and the cost of living is not going down. Maybe according to the official t statistics, maybe according to how the numbers are manipulated by the Labour Bureau and the Stats Office, etc. But however, in reality, the cost of living is only going up. Now, Jerome Powell and the Fed got it all wrong in 2022, at least for the first six months. Even Janet Yellen said that by April 2022, inflation will be under control. It's only a passing phase. I mean, you talk about wrong and misunderstanding of what's going on in finance and the economy. She had it summed up totally incompetent, okay? So the Fed is well behind the curve and doesn't know what's going on. In the street, the cost of living is just rising. And that's gonna bear through into numbers going forward. So this drop of 0.1% in inflation or CPI over the last few months, two, three months, is only a blip. I do not believe that inflation, retail inflation, is going down. I think retail inflation by June is gonna go up. And I'm asked all the time, but why do you get that? And why do you say this? And why do you do that? Okay, again, we're talking about the inflation measure. The inflation measure is a basket of goods. Okay, now that in itself is already a distorted measure of inflation. But let's say that basket of goods is wide enough in order to give a good measure. There are still several factors that are impacting retail inflation. Number one is wage inflation. Number two, supply and demand. Number three, consumer sentiment, consumer spending. Okay, now as long as there is a demand for goods, and we're not even talking about food and energy, you're gonna have high inflation. Food and energy, which is only going up, if you take that out of the inflation measure, and measure that alone, food and energy prices, inflation-wise, are nowhere near under control. And Joe Public, the person, the man in the street, is spending all his money on housing, food, and energy. So he actually feels that the cost of living is going up. So they can bring in any measure they want the fact of the matter is, real inflation is going up, and Jerome Powell and the Fed have it completely wrong. Now, it might be because they're on five, ten million dollars a year, and they're totally detached and immune and see everything as irrelevant, but the fact of the matter is, inflation is going up. So, inflation by, it, by official numbers in the US by June is going to be running at round about the inflation rise, yes, it's going to run around about the seven and a half percent official number. And we're going to have interest rates in the states in by June at around about the 4.75 now. Let's say they're going to be six percent by June, six and a half percent by June. That's my call on interest rates in the US. Wage inflation, as I've stated over and over again, because of the high demand for labor, is only going to go up. It's simple economics where there's high demand and where there's low supply, then the cost of those goods in this particular case labor is going to rise. So wage inflation is going to rise above 4.4%. And what he did say categorically, that if there is a reversal in inflation and sees those numbers that are reversing and there's more pressure, they will take more aggressive action 
on interest rates. However, the market disregarded effectively those comments and went up. The Dow was up over 200 points. The Nasdaq was up over 200 points. S&P was up and Bitcoin was above 23,000. However, look at the bond market. The US 10-year Treasury was running its 3.67%. Again, it was up again, indicating the bond market, which is the real market, the real foundation of financial markets is the bond market or the credit market, as it's called. That is pushing upwards. The yield is pushing higher. And if the yield is pushing higher, then the bond market is expecting rates to move higher. Okay, and remember, I've said that the bond, I expect the bond market to move up to around about four and a half percent by June 2023. The yield on the bonds to move up by four and a half percent. And we're only talking about the US, we're not even talking about Europe and the UK. Moving on to some asset classes, so the dollar was stronger against the euro, a bit weaker against the pound, and a bit weaker against the yen. Now, the pound is in my opinion, on the way up. I expect the pound to be 125, 127 to the dollar. I keep calling it that. It's struggling because Andrew Bailey, head of the um, Bank of England, said that's unlikely to be any further interest rate rises, and that pushed the pound down last week. However, I do think it's going to crawl back up there, and I think there will be more interest rate rises in the UK to combat inflation within the United Kingdom. Gold has gone up and also oil has gone up. Oil went up yesterday 4%. Oil went up for a couple of reasons. Number one, Saudi Arabia said they want the price to be higher. And number two, China is a massive importer of oil, is now reigniting their economy. And they need a huge amounts of oil to get their economy going. So they're the massive importer of oil and they're probably going to suck in any spare capacity globally on oil. So oil went up yesterday 4%. My price level on oil is running at around about the $90 level in the near term. So I expect oil to rise up. Gold also jumped up. Um, and again, my target on gold is around about the $2,000, $2,100 by June 2023. Um, Microsoft was a big leader yesterday. The NASDAQ high, high, high risk assets and um, all the stocks in the Nasdaq moved up because they favor a, a favor a lower interest rate environment. So if, in, if, if, if interest rates are capped or expect to go lower, then obviously the big benefactor of that is the Nasdaq because the Nasdaq shares, tech stocks are very sensitive to um, interest rate rises, okay? That's more or less it from Mayor Valensky at Driving Markets. You can subscribe, share, and catch me on TikTok, also on Instagram. You can comment. I hope you enjoy the channel. Have a good day.